Okay, so I'm going to do my best to do a teardown video for you all. Um, I have decided not to tear out all the electronics, but we will get most of this apart. And I also don't want to do an hour-long video. So, yeah, and this is the hardest part of doing this, too, is i got to say goodbye to my operative Nova for the moment. But we'll get her back going again. Okay, so first and really quick, I think I've shown this before, I did start off putting a voice module <clears throat> into the project, and therefore I built a whole voice module, um, module, I guess, that I attached onto the PS2 remote. So this piece I'm not really using anymore, but if anybody is interested, let me know. So the first piece of hardware, yes, the PS2 remote. Um, you can pick these up at most robotic supply places. It comes with the PS2 receiver. And, um, yeah, that's a pretty basic piece. I'm going to shut her off so she doesn't run out of control. There we go. Okay, so that's the first piece of hardware. All right, then, as you can see, and I've also mentioned before, too, that the body pieces just started breaking on me through development and through obviously falling but also because they weren't very thick especially at the screws so i did change that design a little bit beefed it up a little bit as you can see it actually cantilevers up a little bit because i thickened this whole piece up a bit so some of the parts i'd made improvements to um, and then also in here is a pir sensor uh most of these things, I'm not going to remember the model numbers, but it's SR602, I think, or something like that. It's a very small one. <clears throat> and I initially had another um, voice recognition module that I was going to use that had a mic on the board that would have been installed right here. That's why there's a little grill there. But that, too, I scrapped the idea of. So that's basically, I can probably redesign this to be a bit smaller because it just houses the receiver for the PS2 remote and then the PIR sensor. I also don't like the design of this PIR sensor because as you can see, it's the highest most point of Nova. So if she falls over on her back, she's pretty much pivoting on top of that sensor. So, and then I just have this little plastic cap to cap it off so it's not in use. So that's the first piece of wiring that we'll see. Um, pretty much just DuPont connectors right now. Uh, I will eventually hardwire some of this or use better connectors on a piece like this that you can remove. Okay, so really it's just the PIR sensor and then the PS2 remote. So let's get that out of the way. And then, like I said, I have the new body top. I just have to move the backpack to it. All right, so here's the first look at the wire, and let's zoom in here a little bit, maybe. And it is quite messy. Um, again, because nothing's really permanent yet, I will obviously make this much cleaner and bundle these together better, and then it'll be wonderful. But since I'm not going to disassemble all of this, especially right now on camera without further labeling a lot of these wires, you can see I use uh, painter's tape because it's really easy to just tear off later. Um, I do have duplicates of most of this hardware here in my hand, so we can go over it that way. So this is the first piece, the brains of it all. This is a uh, Mega Pro CH340. It's the Atmega uh, 2560, so it's, it's basically a small version of a Arduino Mega. So it fits in there really nicely. She's right here underneath this pile of wires. So that I can access the USB and then the reset button. The reset button, I did plan to um, create a button in the plastic shell to press it, but then I changed my mind and just am doing a hardware button that's going to get installed in the, on her side for, for quicker access more than anything. Okay, so yes, that's the mega board. Um, and then you'll see over here is the power... Um, step down converter buck converter it's they advertise it as automotive because it's high amperage this is a 12 amp one i believe um and it takes like four to 30 volts or something to that effect so basically the battery runs straight into this first and then this steps down to the um motor voltage of 6.8 volts is what i'm running 
So that's the first step. I don't have a, a second. Actually, let's let's take her bottom off while I talk about this. I don't have the second um, butt converter, a, a double of it, so we'll see it under here. This bottom I also redesigned, and it's the first prototype I made, so it's it's pretty crappy. I'll probably redo it, um, but maybe not because it is the bottom after all. But I absolutely had to do this just to house the battery. <clears throat> um, I, I really wanted to keep everything in the shell and not put anything and see no wires, but... It's a nice square bottom is really the only difference. I did take the original bottom, and then I just added a square block to the bottom. So it gave me a lot more room. So yes, for, and then yeah, I'm using a 11.4 three cell lipo. Um, it provides the amperage that you need to be firing off 12 motors like this. I think that's, again, I've said this in a couple of my other videos, one of the big mistakes that I think a lot of guys are running into is you really have to power these servos with a lot of amperage. And that's also the point of using this high amperage um, buck converter so that it can handle it. If you just use a chintzy little buck converter that can, yes, convert 12 volts down to 6.8, it's not going to be able to deliver you the, the amperage that you need. The battery can. But once you run it through a um, buck converter that can't, then you lost all of your power, more or less. So you definitely want to use a high amperage buck converter. That's very, very important. Okay, that being said, and I'll probably say that phrase a lot, <laughs> my apologies, but here is the um, 5 volt regulator. It's actually an adjustable regulator, and I, I've got it down to 5 volts for the Arduino. My tripod's giving me trouble here. Sorry about that. So, yeah, that's a pretty common board. There's nothing special about it because it's just regulating to 5 volts, basically. And then the other thing under here is the PWM motor controller board, which I do have another, another one of. Um, this one is an Adafruit one. But there are other makers out there, but they all, they're pretty much the same. I think Spark Fun, Fun makes one as well. It's 16 channels, so you could put 16 motors on it. I think they also sell it as uh, an LED controller. But it can be used for servos. And then they can also be chained together. So for my Hexapod project, I actually used two of these because that had 21 motors. This having 16, it's plenty. One just for the 12 motors that we're running. Okay, so that's really that's all that's going on under here. Actually, I do also have now finished putting together the board that I talked about in another video for power management and control, basically. And I should say software. So there's nothing in here that's going to automatically shut things down if something gets overloaded. But between this um, voltage meter, the amp meter, current sensor, I should say, uh, ACS something or other, and then a, a circuit for a switch for the higher voltage this can control my motors via software so i monitor the amperage draw and then i just have a simple voltage divider here which i monitor the battery so that's going to get installed under here along with then the battery on top good to go all right let's zoom out here and go back into the top So again, I do not think I'm going to do undo any of this wiring. Let's just finish off the hardware. So over here is the MPU unit. Um, let's see if we can zoom on that without... Should be able to. It's this common MPU uh, 6050. And that's got two standoffs and it's, it's on there pretty secure and level with the top of the body. Obviously, very important for obvious reasons. And then there's a little buzzer just to make some noise and R2-D2 sounds. And then right here, let me zoom in on that a little bit, is just basically a terminal block for 5 volt and ground on either side. I think there's six, six terminals maybe, just to feed all the other hardware. Because obviously you only get a couple of pins on, on the board itself. Okay, so let's now go into... The rear of Nova 
Um, this is where the pretty much the power components live. I shouldn't really say that, just the switches really. The power components, uh, there's one here and then one underneath, the two converters. But this piece again, very flimsy uh, or thin shell, so this all broke off on me pretty much immediately. Let me see if I can unplug this, I probably can't, so let's just zoom in on it right now. So in here, yes, again, a high amperage switch that actually came with the light bow that I bought. Um, that's pretty important. And then just a regular 12 volt switch for the motors. So I could turn them off on and off separately of the power of the entire robot. And then on there, I just have a little, um, I think I have one of those here. Just a little LCD display um, voltmeter so that I can always see that it's drawing 6.8 volts for the motors. So that's all that's in her butt. Okay, now so in the head, we have the OLED, OLED screen, OLED. Then I have two of the ultrasonic sensors, another very common sensor, as you've all seen. And then tucked away in each corner back there, you can see there's a couple of LEDs on each side, just from these hard-coated strips here. And then I just wired them together into series so that I can control them still independent, independently. And yeah, that is it for the electronics hardware. So here we have the electrical diagram that I put together for this project. Uh, all of the component diagramming tools out there are great, but most of them don't have the hardware that I need. So I got a little frustrated using them. I just ended up doing this with Tinkercad circuit builder to believe it or not. Uh, missing hardware, I basically used little breadboards for them. Um, and also to represent the pinouts on the Arduino Mega because they didn't even have that as a component. So I had to drop an Uno in there. Okay, so real quick, here is the battery. Again, they didn't have a LiPo, so I'll stop mentioning what they didn't have. So here's the LiPo battery. So that's where this all starts. The power comes in and it goes to the um, high amperage switch, which goes to the 30 amp. Well, this one says 30 amp. I ended up using a 12 amp buck converter. And then it also goes to the voltage divider to monitor the battery. Okay, and then from the... Um, 12 amp buck converter it drops down to 6.8 volts and goes to the uh, voltmeter display and then to the motor switch as well as into the amperage current sensor and then into my electronic switch the little circuit board that I built and that's connected to Arduino as well as the current sensor is connected to Arduino to monitor current and voltage Okay, and then it also feeds out to the 6.8, or if I should just say 5 volt buck converter, but it's taking in 6.8 volts, and that feeds the Arduino, as well as all the other components. Okay, and then off to the side here, we have the PS2 receiver, which just goes to straight up to, I think there's six pins, obviously ground in power as well. And then the PDO, PWM controller gets its power <clears throat> from the other end of this electronic switch. So as I'm monitoring power and amperage, if I see a problem with software, I can shut this switch down and it kills the motor. It's essentially an electronic version of, of this hardware switch. Okay, so yes, into the PWM controller, and then there's 12 servos connected to that. And then it uses, this is something I forgot to mention in the hardware teardown that we were just going through, is this actually is connected to SDA and SCL pins. So I also, the MPU unit and the OLED screen use that protocol as well. So here I just have a little breadboard representing that. Um, in Nova, there is an, a second terminal block for these components to connect to those two pins on the mega board okay and this here breadboard represents my uh, ground and power terminal block 
And then we have the PIR sensor connected to pin 30 on the Arduino, then the LEDs connected to pin 31, and the two ultrasonic sensors connected to those pins. And then there's the piezo buzzer. So yeah, it's not the greatest diagram, but the wiring is all correct, and that's really what's important, right? So I can do a teardown, or if something's wrong, I can check and see if it's wiring related and not component related. Okay, so I just wanted to show that really quick. And then while I'm in here, I do have a uh, GitHub I'm putting together that I will release pretty soon with the code and all that. And it also includes a layout for the all of the controls that I went ahead and programmed. Again, I think I mentioned this in my previous video. I went a little haywire, and you can click select three, four times. There's four different sets of buttons you have here to program. Not all of them I've used, and some of them are just for demo and testing and such, So, but it's still useful to have. And I just wanted to show that, yes, that's going to be part of the GitHub that I'm putting together, along with all the, the STL files and all of the code. I think it's probably best to stop here on this video, and then I'm going to shoot a second one now of taking apart the legs and the servos, and we'll talk about how all that goes together. All right. Thanks for watching.